with over 40 million Americans unemployed during the COVID-19 pandemic and everyone being forced to work remote, the rise of direct sales has absolutely taken over our country. Businesses are doing amazing. E-commerce is the hottest spot to be in. Our guest today is going to teach you and give her advice on how you can launch your own business from your home and why it will work for you. Those details coming up next. to Women Wednesday. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? You know, it's weird that we're in the same house doing interviewing each other, but I, I'm fine. It's because it's typical to interview your spouse in the same house <laughs> in two studios. I thought I, I, thought I would still be vir like vir make it seem virtual by still being in my office than being in your office. I just... I know, because it's such a far walk. Uh, <laughs> it's what we're doing here, folks. It's how we spend every day. Uh, so we're going to jump in. I wanted to bring you on the show. I know we talked about it. But bring you on the show because besides being an amazing CEO to LifeFlip Media, you also have started your own business. Uh, and also working, I, I talked about it in the opening, talking about how you are going through getting your certificate to be a health and wellness coach or guru or maven or what all the cool fancy buzzwords are but we're not going to talk about that today i want to talk about the amazing success that you've had with this upstart and upstart anything that's under five years i call an upstart an upstart apparel company that to me wearing it loving it uh you wear it you look fantastic in it this amazing brand called zaya you've built a successful team you've had success with 40 million people unemployed right we, we, we know we have a big problem on our hands. People need to earn income too. Unemployment doesn't always pay the bills. You've been able to create this team because this is your passion. You really fell in love with it. And you've tried other, I don't know what you want to call them. Uh, what are they called? These, these like, online we'll just in e-commerce e businesses or whatever. I don't know. They all have different names. Uh, but you've found success with Zaya. So let's talk about what drove you to work with Zaya. I think that's important so people understand it if they go look for it. Uh, real fast before people get started, if they want to cheat while they're listening to you talk, they want to look, what is a good website for them to kind of look right now as we're talking? Since we're going to be talking about this for a couple minutes, like to be able to guide them. Like, what's your website so folks know? Honestly, they went directly to my personal website, which is lucymitchell.com with an IE. Um, it has everything about me as well as uh, specific tabs about Zaya active oh, cool. on there as well. Cool. Okay. So just if they want to follow along. So let's talk about what drove you to Zaya, number one. And then let's jump into some questions that I believe folks out there are going to have about how they can, you know, the the truth and the myths of what you do. So what drove you to Zaya? Um, well, you know, I think my Zaya story or my, my why stems uh, back to community for me. Um, I have always had a passion or a drawing to a sense of community, um, since to, to a sense of sisterhood, and, and which is odd because I do have three sisters, and um, they all live in California, um, and I love them dearly when, when they watch this. Uh, Got gotcha, you, booze. But um, I have just wanted to be a part of something bigger, and I ended up f somehow finding this company on Instagram and uh, I actually watched from afar for a year and a half. This company is only three years old. So believe me, I kick myself. If I could literally kick myself um, in the backside, I would for not, for not jumping the gun. But I kind of feel like that in itself was a calling because I don't think I was in the right place a year and a half ago to even take it seriously. Um, and maybe Zaya wasn't in the right place for me a year and a half ago. So I, we're going to take that point and come back to it. 
um, we'll, we'll circle back around to being in the right time and the right place in the right frame of mind when you get into something like this. So, you know, flash forward to seven months ago when I was in direct sales and it just wasn't filling my cup. It wasn't filling that, that spot in, in my heart. And I was being supportive of your business and your passion and your dream. And, um, I had just, just started to embark on a, the health and wellness coaching journey. I, I will be graduating next month as a certified, um, transformational nutritional coach. And I knew I wanted to do something with that. And I know active wear and being active all correlates together. And I was still following this one individual who is one of my dearest friends now. And something just kept telling me that now is the time. Now is the right time. And so for me, I just signed up. Um, I did have experience um, all, you know, about a year and a half, two years in direct sales, but it, I wasn't successful at it because it wasn't my passion, what I was doing. It wasn't the health and wellness industry, but I was just doing it to try to make a paycheck, not to make an impact. And that for me was key because yes, with Zaya Active, you can wear the leggings and get paid to wear the leggings. Unlike Lululemon or Athleta or Nike, they're not paying you to wear their stuff. And Zaya Active, that's one of our slogans or one of our, um, not so much our brand statements, but just something we kind of joke about is how often can your active wear tell you that, well, you get paid to wear their leggings. Um, but, but more so for me was that uh, one of our four, well, our four pillars is community, activity, light, and uplift. And the whole story behind this brand, what, which is women owned and created, was that Aaron Bradley, who's the creator of this company, was going on a hike, um, a moonlit hike with a bunch of women. And she kind of stepped back and she watched these women uplift each other in the moon, in the moonlight during this struggle activity of going climbing up this steep part of the mountain. And they were building each other up and they were helping each other. And the moonlight was shining down on them. And it was this sense of community. And she just stopped and she thought, I want to create something that is around these feelings. And when I heard that story, I was like, that I have to be a part of. And if the company went away tomorrow, but the community of women that I met and that essence of a foundation behind, in a business is what I walk away with, I can take that and I can still make something I could turn that and I can apply that to my health and wellness um, coaching business. I can take that philosophy and that feeling and that action and I can apply it to the next thing that I do. I can apply that to how I help our business grow, how, how I can motivate our children, how I can motivate our family. So for me, that's my Zaya story. And that is what has helped me be so successful. That is what I have so many customers coming to me saying, I have had other and I hope no, no other reps watch this because it's not my intention, but I, you know, I've had many customers come to me and say, I had a Zaya rep that I went to, but your passion for these leggings and how you made me feel and how you've worked with me has motivated me to like, want to stay with you. And like, like you just make me feel so good. And I'm like, it's just a pair of leggings, but it turns out it's not. So that's how I found this company. And that's, that's what gets me up every single day. I get excited to pick out my outfit, which is so weird to pick. I mean, you know, I pick out my outfit. I come upstairs. I've got my Zaya outfit for the next day to go online and she tell me, you know, go to my Instagram stories and share my Zaya outfit of the day. And I know that I'm changing I'm affecting somebody in some way because I'm doing it passionately because I know the story behind the women that created this tank top or that pair of leggings was there was so much love and passion put behind it. I, that's awesome. I love what you said. I, I wanted to tell you that I was all of a sudden singing a Shania Twain song when you were like at, at the end there, like, man, I feel like a woman. Oh, rock, sorry. We're not, I'm not supposed to sing, but it's, it's empowering, right? That this is, Women Wednesday, you know, we're, we're really getting into this hashtag belonging to us. So what you're talking about is amazing. A, a female, a women, a woman, women owned company uh, 
I mean, and I've been to one of those events that we went. <laughs> Funny story, everyone. We were in Nashville right between, before they closed the country down. So that's where we were in a gigantic bubble watching all these amazing women go through it. And they do like, it's like they all knew each other but didn't know each other, but they're all very connected online. And you do use social media, but l let's talk about some things because people always talk about on our show and the questions that our folks always ask in the comments, they're talking about, okay, this is great, but uh, I mean, how fast do I get paid? Or I mean, how much work goes into it? And I can say for everybody out there when it comes to Lucy watching my wife run a business, besides running Life Flip, which is, we've got this down, trust me, five years into this, we've this is what we do. But when it comes to this business, you've had to learn like everything yourself. Like you figured out how to, how to engage your audience using Instagram, which is so key because you weren't that social media person before. I remember we used to go buy iPhones. You were like, it's just a phone. You don't use it for anything. And now like, I think we compete to see who, who posts more on Instagram and on social. But tell folks out there, you know, 40 million people unemployed. Uh, this sounds like, I mean, I've seen the numbers. I've seen you in the top 10 the last three months during the middle of a pandemic. So what does it take if you're out there and you're looking, what's a real, real expectation? Somebody comes to you and like, Lucy, I want to join your team. Guide me, Obi-Wan. You're my only hope. What is, you know, how do they, how do they, I mean, what's, let's get some real talk here. What do you, would you say your first 45 days you should expect? Well, first of all, the first 45 days expect to not ex know everything because I don't, I don't even know everything. I've, I've had a lot of individuals say, well, I don't want to start yet because I want to know every single piece of clothing. I want to know every single item. I want to know every single bits and pieces. And I can tell you that in any corporation, any company, there are employees that don't know every single thing. I don't still know every single component. There are apps on this phone that I still don't even know how to use, let alone every single component of what we're selling. You know, and that's the thing. Everything is figure outable. Everything is figure outable. You just take it one day at a time. But in your first 45 days, one of the things that we completely thrive ourselves on is just get out there and talk about it. If you're of the mindset that what do I got to do to get paid right away? I'm, I'm personally, honestly, I'm of the mindset. You're not going to make it. The reason why I say that is because you're not passion driven, you're, you're money driven. And while I, I know that there'll be a lot of people wanting to hop on right away and be like, wait a second, you're supposed to be money driven. Okay, you're talking about women and you're selling to women and women are driven to spend the money. And so we're, we are selling to women. We are selling to women. We are selling to women with a passion. So you have to come at it from a different aspect. And women who are watching us, they do not care if your hair is perfectly coiffed and your makeup is perfectly done. I have sold more leggings with no makeup on and my hair in a bun and things sticking out all over the place but I am selling the outfit like I'm wearing gold and I'm talking about how it makes me feel as a woman, how, and excuse me, but I am a woman, but how it makes my upper body feel and my lower body <laughs> and having three children, how it holds everything in, how it sucks everything in and lifts everything up. I mean, my husband, honey, you know, you love it when I put those leggings on and um, so yes, in the first 45 days, the great thing about it is that I'm a systems person. And I, that was one of the first things I created was systems for my team. I didn't have a team yet. So I've got an onboarding process. I have got all of the YouTube videos. YouTube is an amazing, an amazing platform. And we're only three years old, Eric. I don't know if I even mentioned that, but Zaya Active is only three in February. We celebrated our three year anniversary. and. Last month, I just found out we had 300% growth in recruitment. And I'm not even going to say for the FTC reasons or whatnot, how much was so, um, given out in commissions. Um, we had a, a promotion of a free pair of Nikes if you rank advanced, and we didn't have enough Nikes. 
that's how many people Ray convinced. So then instead they got a gift card. Um, I mean, that's how much growth there is because the passion is there. So in your first 45 days, the first thing I say is stop and realize, why are you doing this? And I'm here. Let's let's link arms. We're a sisterhood. Let's do this together. But look for your resources. You're not given a binder of day one. How do you do this? You figure it out. I figured it out. My upline didn't even know who I was when I emailed her and said, hey, Allie, just signed up under you. She was like, wait, what? Who? What? Huh? Because I watched her for a year, 15 months. And then by the time she reached back out, okay, let's have your launch party. I had already had my launch party and already scheduled three parties to introduce to all of my friends because I was in the fitness realm. She didn't know what to do. Then all of a sudden she's emailing me. She's like, you've already rank advanced. Why? Because I sat there and I Googled and I YouTubed and I educated myself. I have all of the books, stories that stick. I've got the atomic habits, you know, dive into personal development. That is huge in, in any type of business, but especially in network marketing, because you are your own worst enemy. And I never believed that before. I always just thought, oh, God, my husband's listening to another podcast. He's got another book he's reading. I am just trying to watch all these stories of all these people. I want to be just like, instead of figuring out who I wanted to be, like, I wanted to be like me. Once I figured that out, that's what helped with my success. And that's what now I'm telling my team. It's like, don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Start diving into your own personal development and figure out who you want to be. Because then you will attract your tribe. You will attract your ideal customer. You will attract your repeat customers. Um, that was one thing about Zaya I wanted to say is that, that but what makes us unique is that we're not a brick and mortar there are no stores you could go to. All of our sales are done through us directly. In fact, you go to ZayaActive.com. You cannot even shop. It will ask for your email address. They will email you back and ask where you're located so they can find a local rep. I mean, what company does that where they don't even take a sale for themselves? I think what's amazing. They will, yeah, I totally agree because I think what's amazing is you guys crushing it during a pandemic, actually exceeding record-breaking numbers. And think about it, 2020 started off basically people spending money. I mean, we were, I hate to give the man any credit at all, but we were having a very good a very good year when it comes to everybody's businesses. And then a pandemic hits in your company, like so many of these companies, because it's not just Zaya, it's almost all of them, these home-based businesses, because now we're stuck in our homes. Uh, like it or not, offices are never going to return. 40 million people out there and you're in a four-year-old company with how many people total, how many reps do you think they have? You know? Is I active? Yeah. Uh, right now we're 30,000. We're in the U.S. and Canada. And that's the interesting thing that we were talking about. In fact, even the FTC was coming out and really coming down hard on network marketing businesses because they saw an influx through Facebook and Instagram and even Zoom in parties and um, I don't know if I want to call it social selling, but, uh, you know, this um, online selling per se. Um, and so they sent out, this, you know, there were some that were claiming they had the possible cure uh, for COVID-19, but they sent out this warning where you cannot make income disclaimers that we will cure your, you know, your anything regard re, re, uh, with reference to the um pandemic and and whatnot and luckily Zaya Active was not included in that but we were harshly warned to like hey re reel it back in but yes during a pandemic there were so there have been so many I mean Color Street is one of them that is the nail strips there are still a lot of areas I think California is just starting to open up with regards to getting manicures and pedicures um that was not included in their phase one opening I thought it was like here in Oregon, but, um, they, uh, I have a girlfriend who was in that and she said that they averaged, I think, I don't know, we'll just pull a, a random number, say like 80,000 strips per month. They were doing 3.2 million in one month. 
of their sale. Like Jesus. they have to like mass produce during this. How many weeks were we? Have we have we been in quarantine now? Uh, if we go off what the state of New York and I, as you know, I watch uh, Governor Cuomo's uh, morning briefings. I think it said twelve weeks was the one this morning, which made me feel like we've been doing this for way too long. Uh, so twelve weeks, but it is amazing. I mean, yeah. it's funny you're talking about, but it's the health and wellness side of the house. If you think about it, you feel good. Your nails are done. You know, obviously getting your hair cut is a big thing everybody wants to do, but fitness, right? What have we all seen since March? Everybody's out walking, jogging, running, hopping on a Peloton, which we like to do. <laughs> we are not yes. sponsored by Peloton yet, but damn it, we're trying. Uh, but, you know, if you think about it, these companies are out here killing it. Uh, so let's talk about that. So somebody joins your team. What are some things they're going to have to get used to? I mean, if you want to be successful in this business and you've cr absolutely crushed it and your entire team, which I've never seen before, I've seen other businesses that are out there, these multi-businesses, what take what takes them to the next level? What takes, I mean, everybody thinks it's a get rich quick thing, right? If you've watched the videos, there's all these influencers and it's like, I'm the best, I'm the greatest. You come with me and you'll see, look, here's my check, right? We see, we know those folks. We see the videos online what what can people what i mean they come in how much hard work is it i mean is there work involved or are you gonna do it all i mean i know you're a good leader and your team loves you but like let's let, let's cut the mustard here there's a lot of people who just come in and i've heard you talk about them and other people where it's like dude you just think just gonna show up and people are just gonna be like oh cool i'll just buy that no it takes effort right i mean You've probably yeah, overcome no, more does. objections now than ever. I remember I'm interviewing the same person who told me I'm not a salesperson. Remember a few years ago, you I know you preached that to me. You're I'm I'm not a salesperson. I'm telling you folks, when you watch our show, we're gonna get real with you. And trust me, she used to tell me I'm not a salesperson. You want me to sell something, I'm not gonna sell anything. Those are her words. <laughs> her very words. I'm not it's the thing I'm not. No. I'm not, but I am a really good convincer. Ida, sir. <laughs> so you're a salesperson. Okay, cool. Just so we convince her or whatever you want to say, Please. salesperson. We'll just... it's, even, it's even in my pitch, per se, of when a hostess is getting ready to host a party, because that is how we get our, our word out, is we host a, um, a hostess will host an online party. And in one of my blurbs, it says, you even thought you were never going to buy anything and look at you now. Not only did you buy, but you're also hosting a party. And I laugh at myself sometimes that I'm like, oh my God, look at me. I'm like I'm totally that salesperson. But no, look, you sign up with me. Um, I give you your literally your um your 60 day map. Um, you've got my cell phone number. You've got my YouTube videos. You have got my team's YouTube videos. You've got my grandma team's access. You've got great grandma's team who actually is related to the Bradley family. You are, are getting in on the, um, what is that word? Coup de la gras of access. I don't even know if that's a word. We'll just say you, you, it's a word. We're going to go with it. Put it in the dictionary if it isn't. <laughs> The only way you fail is if you don't try. I can't hold your hand. I can't do it for you. I don't like people who copy paste my stuff. I don't like people who don't make an effort. I, I applaud originality. I applaud thinking outside the box. Um, and, and I encourage that because you have to make this your own or else the, your audience, my audience, your audience, everyone's audience is going to start to see the same thing. And then they're going to get bored and they're going to move on. And that's what I, what I tell my team. It's like, and I'm still, and honestly, we're going to get real. I'm still learning how to be a leader. I am learning. I'm actually having to swallow really hard and go to my husband and ask for help. Because I've I hear he knows what he's talking about. about. Rumors have it that he does, and that's funny that you say that. So let's let's stop on leadership for a second because I love this topic. Uh, we talk about it a lot. And as a CEO of a company, and you run your own company, and you have this team, let's talk about it. What are some char characteristics that you think of when you think of a leader? I'd love to hear what your idea of a leader is, and it doesn't have to be like describing yourself, but in a perfect world. 
you jot down three things that come to mind, this is what makes a perfect leader. I'd love to hear. Oh gosh. Well, um, yes, I put you on the spot too. I, That's I know. Cool. I'm like, because I, I just went to this two hour training on Saturday and, uh, by all of our amazing leaders reps and I, they had so many great nuggets. And one of the things, the three things that come to my mind was a great leader is your team's best cheerleader. Um, which I, I thought you, you cheerlead not only the ones that are doing the best, but even the ones at the end of the pack. Um, another uh, uh, amazing trait of a, of a leader is recognition. Um, and then, and I'm looking up only because I'm trying to think of my notes and like. You said one, you said one yesterday, actually. It, and it's funny because, again. I know I pay attention when you talk. See, look at this. Uh, the show is living proof. Uh, but you said it. And, and, you know, of course, we're always going to tie something into the Marine Corps. Adapt and overcome. I hear, I hear you say those things. Like, you have to, you know, adapt and overcome. Situations aren't going to be the same. You mentioned it. Copying, pasting, and being authentic, right? We see Gary Vaynerchuk talk about being authentic, being the real you. You are, and I, you know, you're coaching people on not to just be the copy, paste mentality that... We just heard yesterday's guest, our Tuesday guest, Jeremy Leonard, talking about even on LinkedIn, right? Each platform has its its place and its purpose. Each piece of content you send out is Lucy. Like, we're going to get to it here because my next question kind of leads into it about your awesome post yesterday that you put out. Uh, we're we're going to pick on a, a celebrity couple uh, announcement that they used Instagram for before we leave because I want your two cents on that. But you are very authentic on social. I mean, how do you teach that to your team? Like you're talking about leadership. Well, how do you bring that to your team to be like, how do you tell somebody to be the authentic you, right? It's one of those random like, be you, don't be them. <laughs> be, you know, okay, you can read a book and you can't become Gary Vaynerchuk. You can't become Sheryl Sandberg. You can't become yeah. Oprah, right? Everybody wants to be those people, but there's only one of them. You can't duplicate them. And I think there, look, for me, it's a phase of life that I'm in. I don't have that fear anymore. I don't have that fear. There was a long time where it was like, oh, I need to be like so-and-so because they're up here. So my posts need to be like them. Or I need to, oh my gosh, my, my mother's going to read this. Or um, a, a, a somebody that I'm working, if I was in the corporate world or whatnot, I have come to a phase in my life and experiences that I have lived through and acknowledged that I have no problem putting, being that transparent. You have to be comfortable with that. If you are going to be in the business of direct sales where you are going to be online and you are going to be stories going live uh, you have to become in my business. I have to be comfortable with my my body to go live and talk about a sports bra. That's my choice. That does that mean that the next person um, is not going to sell as many bras if they don't take off the tank top and and show the bra? No. But I'm also a health and wellness coach where I am empowering women to own their bodies, whether they weigh 400 pounds or 100 pounds. Because I don't know what journey they've been through and they need to embrace the fact that you, your body and your, what you've been through is a powerful and emotional state. And that is nothing to hide and that is nothing to be afraid of. So my, my vision and my voice is used for something completely different. So as a leader, I do have to express to my team, find your voice. And as long as you express it authentically, you're using it in the right way. But if you're trying to use your voice to speak as me, everyone is going to see that and you're not going to get very far in life and in this business. Ooh, that's solid. I like that. Ooh, mic drop. She's done. Uh, <laughs> so let, let's talk about being authentic. I, yeah, recently, you put up a post. Uh, it's one of my favorites. Uh, we're, we'll, we'll edit it for the purposes of not offending people this early in the morning. Uh just because some people probably won't like profanity. And we don't drink on this show, so it's too damn early to be drinking. So let's not do that. But you posted, and it's a mindset. And I love that you do these on Monday, these Monday mindsets. Uh, this one, and I'll, I'll read most of it. It's edited, so folks out there, 
I would, of course, love to use some of the words that she used, but we'll edit them for you guys. Uh, it says, you know, it's talking about Mommy Monday. You know, I love, that's why I love Women Wednesday, because we talk about, you know, you guys are moms. Like, it's different. Like, dads, we just kind of just do dad stuff. But, like, you guys have so many roles I, as as I really readers. love hearing you talk as a mother. Yes. Yes. I'm going to read as a mother right now, just because it would be weird you reading your own post. Just say it would be really weird for that. I mean, basically, you're talking about here about F this shit, right? I can say shit. I can't say the F word, but I can say shit because I can. It's my show. <laughs> That's why it's named me. Uh, but you talk about F this. Let's talk about that mentality, right? Like, let, let's dive into a couple of those. Like, where did you get that mindset? Like, it's not a negative thing. I know a lot of people, they see the F word and they go, like, oh, God, that means you're being negative. Well, it's not. You're talking about sometimes you just have to let go and not let everything own your head, right? Like I always talk about owning, if they don't get, if they don't pay rent, they don't live up here. I mean, is that what your post, I mean, your posts are very much set in your mentality that seem to speak volumes for other people. So when you wrote this one, what was that about? Because I have one last we're going to close with, but I really, I love this post yesterday. It was just amazing to read it because it felt so empowering. Even I was like, I'm empowered for you. So it was pretty awesome. So, I mean, let's talk about that mindset, right? Getting your mind right, because it's helped you. I know that you've had a lot of things that you talk about when you've tried to build businesses and you've fallen flat on your face. Failure, right? We talk about failure a lot. And I think you've learned that as an entrepreneur, but it was your mindset, right? Would you agree that your mindset was a lot of it? So what got you out of that I can't do it mindset to the, I don't give a shit if I fail, I'm gonna charge this hill and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get it done. What changed your mindset? Um, I, well, I think a lot of it had to do with, I mean, the mommies, the mindset and mimosas Monday, um, theme that I try to, when I remember is, is, is for my moms. And I think for me, what it comes boil, it boils down to is the number of conversations that I have had with moms and their mindset is that they have no life other than being a mom and that they have no control and that they have nothing else. And they have it, and when they say that, they say it with a hesitation and a negativity. Not a, I want nothing else but to be a mom, but it's a, I, I have nothing else. I am a mom. And I don't agree with that mindset because first things first, when I wake up every single day, I am Lucy. The second thing I am is a wife because that's what I was first before I was a mother. Then I am a mother. And then anything else left of me after that falls into place. And I decided that I need to be a voice for, for women, for mothers, to let them know it is okay. And that's what that post was, was every once in a while I just sit there and I'm just like, you know what, F this shit. And if I can say it, there's a lot of moms out there that are mouthing it. They're mouthing it under their breaths. They're mouthing it when they walk in the room and there's all these dishes in the sink and they're looking around and the kids are sitting there, other husbands sitting there. And it's just like, man, and it's like, you got a choice. It's like you could get the dishes done. You let them sit there or, you know, it's, you know, whatever it might be, it's, or, or it's quarantine and you go to put on those pants because now you can go outside and you go to zip up those jeans and they just won't button. And they just won't button. And then what do you mouth to yourself? That's what that is. It's like, okay, if you want to mouth it, well, sweetheart, I will say it out loud for you. And I started changing my mindset the day a doctor looked at me and said, if you don't change something, you're going to have to give yourself insulin shots and your children might not have a mommy. And that moment was seven months ago. For me, when I thought I was doing everything right, but my body was going in a downward spiral. And that could be a whole nother episode all in itself about health and wellness and listening to your body when it sends signals. But for me, when I realized, oh my gosh, I could leave my children motherless because my body's sending me signals I'm not listening to. Well, sometimes your mind is sending you signals that you're not listening to. Well, you need to change your mindset and you need to listen to those signals. 
And sometimes you just got to say F that shit. I, I love that. F that shit. I love that. We're going to run with that. That is the other hashtag for our Women Wednesday Today's F that shit. Uh, go use it. We'll see how well it goes for you. Don't put it on Facebook. Someone will probably report you. You can put it on Twitter. You can put anything on Twitter. Just think. the big You can cap lock and just write law and order. Some other jackal does that every day. Uh, but let's talk about the last topic. I know we've had long discussions about it because I think we both saw it and you actually said something about it. I kind of just went, oh, my God, did they really post that? Because the picture didn't match the statement. Uh, I don't know if people watch this family, know this family, follow this couple on their podcast, which is pretty outstanding. I know you actually turned me on to listen to it because it was this happy married couple talking about everything, how they get along, sex, all the good stuff. And Rachel Hollis and her husband, who just released his book earlier this year, announced in a very random, strange, weird Instagram post where they're like holding each other and smiling that they're getting a divorce after months. And they're not, I think their podcast is still going on. So what's your reaction to that? As somebody who follows that, I know we all have our podcast. Uh, you know, Joe Rogan's come under heat recently. Other people have come under heat for what they're doing. But you look at this couple, right? And you don't look at them as some celebrity couple. So you're not like all hooked on them like we could get with, you know, Hollywood stars. I think there's only a few people left in Hollywood in the music world that are still together. I think Faith Hill and Tim McGraw topped the list for being married the longest. Uh, But what's your thoughts on this, this announcement and how they did it? It seemed kind of douchey. Like, like you don't care about the people who followed you. Like, hey, we're going to put this douchey post out because a divorce is awesome. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, well, for the longest time, I don't even think that I had even words because I was just like, that's the picture you choose? Hey, just to let you know, we're getting a divorce. So, like, respect our privacy while we work through this time. But, like, and he's in the background. Like, hey, I, I watched my social media blow up because especially being in the health and wellness industry, and Rachel Hollis is one who was re- speaking at at Beach Body Summits and and pretty much every direct marketing aspect you can think of. She's speaking at it every convention and the Rise Together podcast, the Rise Together summits. I, I wanted us to go last year, and it just didn't work out with our business travels. Um, and then they had the podcast. I had you listen to a couple amazing episodes. Um, I've got her book for me. It boiled down to, I think I would have still had respect had it not been presented that way. I think that that just made it seem like, Hey, we decided we're going vegan. (laughs) And I would be like, okay, well, you were just talking about how you just barbecued up half a cow, but all right, today you're going vegan. All right, I'll 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 get on board. No. And I just kind of, I did a post on my business page. I didn't post it to my Instagram um, about our marriage. We've been married for, uh, I think, longer than them. Um, yes, we have. We beat them by like three years. Yeah. And, and I did a, 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 what I felt was a very monumental post of just like, you know, we, we had a a rough patch and we put our, ourselves even before our children. Some people say you don't stay together for the children and we stayed together for us. We worked through it and, and we definitely kept it off social media. We definitely didn't play it out whether, whether we had this business going or not, but it definitely would not have been one of those, us like high-fiving each other. Yo, bro. You know, I just think that there's an, an etiquette, there's a decorum. And I think that that's out there forever. Their children are going to see that at some point. And, and, you know, and they came under fire so much recently with regards to Black Lives Matter. Uh, that somebody in their business you, uh, took a quote of Maya Angelou and made it their own. Cool. And, she, and she had to come. Yeah, there's, there's so much. I think she needs to crawl under shut everything down, regroup, collect yourself, figure it out. And, and I think that this is just that first, this is just that extra domino that's just continuing to fall. Mm -hmm. Um, Because, you know, but I just think that there's a lot of marriages, marriage is hard. 
marriage is hard. You're, you're talking about two personalities that are, are great together at times and then they can be bad at times. And quarantine, I mean, we work at home together. We have been doing this together for four years now that we have lived in Oregon. That is why my office is downstairs and yours is upstairs. There's a reason for that because we short with six months, we shared an office six months. We lasted mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, for a reason that was, uh, yeah, um, it was, that's why we're still married, but, um, but we have made it through quarantine. We've had this conversation. I think we have fought less during quarantine. Um, and I just, it, it does shock us because we had this conversation, like, I wonder how many marriages are going to last, how many relationships are going to snap. And then we looked at each other and it's like, well, this is our daily life. We work at home. You know? So I just, I just am still floored. I actually don't even like hearing about it because it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Like of the number of women, and that's what I read, the number of women who looked up to her and went to their husband saying, I want you to listen to this couple so we can be like them and work together. And then literally over a 24 hour period, it, it breaks like that. It's just, you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. They didn't lead up to anything. It's none of our business. And I think it should have stayed none of our business for a while. That's my opinion on it. I love that. I think that's accurate. I think that's the thing is, you know, you portray yourself as one thing, people start looking up to you, you have this responsibility as you become an influencer, as somebody who's holding summits and taking people's hard earned cash to come listen to you and change their lives and then turn around and you're just selling a, a, a bad bag of goods, right? I mean, I mean, stealing quotes, I hate to say it, but people have been doing that for way too long. Uh, I think since social media goes, everybody has a quote post that they, you know, claim to be theirs. Just bad timing during Black Lives Matter to not be doing, you know, that. It, was, it wasn't during Black Lives Matter. I want to clarify that. But it was um, uh, February. Oh, still Black, Black History Month. But yeah. Black History Month. And, but uh, either way, Maya Angelou, I mean, come on. Yeah. Come on. Uh, I'm going to go do a quote tomorrow. I have a dream. It's totally mine. Yeah, no one else has no ever problem. said that one. And the apology was just, it was a very lax, lack, luster. I, there was a whole, a whole thing on it and whatnot, but it was a very tone deaf apology or whatnot. So it was a whole dug deep and uh, one that should have just shut things down and just kind of regroup, reeducate your team. And I think several more mistakes were made. And then to come out like this, another tone deaf, emotionally deaf, like some, there's a huge disconnect within that company yeah. and, and it does. And again, you want to talk about leadership. It goes back to your leadership. Those are the leaders right there. And that was a tone deaf announcement right there. So I want to ask you before you go up, I actually had this question pop in my head. Uh, you know, speaking of black lives matter, there's obviously it's the number one thing in our news feed. Uh, we proudly took our children and, and stood in a peaceful protest with our children two weeks ago, which was the most empowering thing I can say that we've probably done. Uh, it was awesome to sit there and do it and see those families around doing it. As a business owner, and I'm not talking about LifeLip, I'm talking about seeing yourself out there with your job within Zaya, and even with LifeLip, but we're pretty much aligned on LifeLip. We, we support our black brothers and sisters out there and we'll do everything in our power to get the, be a platform for them. But for your business, when, how are you handling it? How are you seeing? I know that you've told me about some of these nightmare businesses that are basically in the Stone Age and referring to, you know, folks of Asian descent as like this, you know, Oriental, like it's like a rug or something from the 1900s. I mean, how are you seeing business doing and what are you doing your business to make sure that you are stating your opinion? A lot of people want to see show what side they are. We talk about being anti-racist and I know you and I are 100 percent aligned on that. How are you making sure your team, everybody stays in message? Because it's a very fine line, right? A lot of people are looking at businesses and how they respond to this current matter that is finally really, I think, bubbled over, reaches breaking point from the 30s to the 60s and, and to even the 92 when they had the uh, riots in L.A. Uh, all of this is bled over to today. 
I mean, how are you handling your business talking about this? Are you open about it? Are you not discussing it? I mean, it's weird, but you're a female business owner. So you kind of fit in that category that we talk about on the show on non-women Wednesday. And we've talked about it on a women Wednesday where our black brothers and sisters, they've had racism for almost 700 years. We're talking to Montel, which was an amazing stat to hear. And then women, right? If you talk about it, you know, women just getting the right to vote and do all this amazing things, which seems so weird. But you guys still aren't respected in the workplace. So many of you are not CEOs. You're not given the same pay. And then you add in our, you know, LGBTQT. I'm sorry, I'm not being disrespectful. I just know it's just, I'm trying to get it down and not leave anyone out. So no disrespect to anybody, I promise. I'm just a knucklehead. Uh, but, you know, when you see these three communities totally affected by it. We had the Supreme Court decision come down yesterday that basically slammed the Trump administration where we cannot, you know, we, we love everybody and everybody gets the equal opportunity. Nobody's getting judged. It doesn't matter who you lie down with. That's not for our choice to make. But how are you? Let's talk about the Black Lives Matter movement, which I think is the most important. It is the most important. How are you handling your business during that time and communicating your team about it? Um, I think, first of all, is I heavily relied on the leaders within my company for direction um, because I can't speak for Zaya Active as a whole. And when um, having this is something completely new for me, I was I needed to educate myself personally. I needed to educate myself on what white privilege is. I needed to educate myself. Um, I mean, I was dealing and and I'm dealing with this not only as a business owner, but as a mother. Um, uh, and, um, as a citizen and, you know, I, I had to sit there and reeducate myself. You know, I was that individual that said all lives matter. I don't see color. And I didn't understand how wrong and how racist that really sounded only because that's how I was raised. And it wasn't termed that way in the seventies and eighties as a bad thing. Um, so while I was educating myself, I did heavily rely on the leadership of Zaya Active. And when they came out with a powerful statement, we had an emergency leadership call and they were all in tears and they donated to Kenya Keys and they donated to um, four amazing scholarship funds. They gave us the opportunity to donate as well, which I personally, on behalf of my team, donated $50 to each of the scholarship funds. I gave the, my, my, all of my team members had the links as well. And I, I did not make it a requirement, but I did just reach out to them and just say, look, this is all our own journey. Um, and I, I can't tell you what to do or not do. And just as long as you're educating yourself and you're being as, as transparent as, as possible. Um, and, and also in our advertising, make sure that we, we have amazing, um, uh, reps of all colors within our community and that we are showing them and, and they loved it. I mean, it's so many, I think somebody even in our marketing group had said, I would love to see some reps of color wearing our items. And like, I don't even know how many we have. They said, yes, please, you know, please, you know, share my stuff, share me in these items. And, and I personally, which I said, I don't want it to be offensive. Is that okay? You know, I want to per personal permission to do so. I want to make sure that I am respecting you and giving you due credit. What is your name? What is your Instagram handle? I want people to follow you, you know, and the, and you know, the ones that I reached out to were just like, yes, queen, thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's what I'm able to do because honestly, I'm having to step back. I just got this amazing book. Um, that I just ordered, um, but vibrate higher daily, live your power by, uh, Lalia Delia. Um, this was actually recommended and, uh, she's an amazing spiritual writer and self-help pioneer. And she's a black writer. And, um, that I feel like is like really going to help me tap into a higher power of understanding. Um, so that's me being completely transparent in that I am a leader of a team. Um, but it's a very touchy subject yep. and, and that's where I'm at. It's like, I, I'm still sitting here. I did an amazing Peloton ride today that had me in tears. And then I did a speak up, um, med meditation afterwards. My dog I was trying to meditate, but the dog was right in my face. So I got to do the meditation again. <laughs> but, um, I, the ride just, I can't even say her name, Tundi, mm -hmm. 
I've heard you that's know, an amazing ride. Everybody that I've uh, seen on social talking about it has just raved about it. I read this great post. It was either Just King or Dennis Morton, one of the two of them. And they're, neither one of them looked anything alike, but I don't know which one it was, but they both talked about it. It was a powerful ride. Even Matt Wilpers talked about it. And I know Alex Trezant, who was the first person who brought the Aubrey, uh, Ahmad Aubrey murder uh, to my attention. And his uh, that was one of the most powerful. And then his post, I, I know we were actually both watched it together, his powerful post about being afraid as a black man in New York City, and he's very well known. I mean, talk about a guy who hangs out with some many amazing people, and he was afraid for his life. I mean, the fact that his mom still calls him on Friday nights to make sure he gets home. Uh, I mean, it's pretty. I mean, it's pretty powerful. So those, I heard that ride was amazing. So I want to thank you for joining us today, talking about these topics. You're another amazing, you know, woman leader that's out out there. We love having you here on Women Wednesday. Uh, you always come on, drop amazing knowledge. I think a lot of folks who are tuning in today are really going to take away a lot of the power that you talked about. And they know that they can go to Lucy Mitchell with the CIE. Let's don't spell it like I love Lucy, but Lucy Mitchell.com to find out and they can connect with you uh, and always find you on Instagram. I think your stories are very empowering and follow along with what you're talking about. And if you have any questions for Lucy, go ahead and feel free to message her. Uh, her socials on our website so you can connect with her and she'll be able to jump into questions. If you've left any questions in the comments on the show, if we haven't been able to answer them during the show, we'll go back. I'll make sure Lucy jumps in and checks them too and can answer and connect with you and guide you. If you want to learn more about Zaya and her team, which I'm sure she'd love to talk to you. If you just want to talk to somebody to empower you, Lucy's a great mentor. So I want to thank you again for coming on the show and really driving home this great point on Women Wednesday. So thank you so much, Lucy, for joining us today. My pleasure. Awesome.